Billy Joe Golly, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, I kind of want to know this before we go any further. Uh, first, first question is, is there something that is relatively simple, but for whatever reason seems to escape you from your day-to-day activities? Is there just something simple that can't seem to find its way into your life for whatever reason? Oh, it seems like there's a lot of things that should be simple. Zoom, Zoom's work. Technology works the way it's supposed to. It should be simple, but it never is. You turn into a tech wizard. Yeah, for me, it's it's a little more pedestrian. For me, it's just sunglasses. I just I wish I could wear sunglasses, but it's 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 an extra step, and I don't I don't know. I feel like there's two moving parts, and it's just something that I would like to incorporate into my life that just doesn't seem to happen. Now, Billy Joe, I guess I, I kind of wanted to extend that question a little bit further. In terms of insurance, we've never been you know accused of being progressive in the way we do things. A lot of times, is there something simple that? has escaped, I mean, I guess, you know, in, in your own agency or just your, your experience of the industry that has escaped us for whatever reason that you feel uh, maybe deserves another shot? A lot. A lot deserves another shot of rethinking that should a human be doing this or should this be automated by data and systems? Uh, we're doing a lot of that rethinking right now. Before, it, it, it was just, well, we hire people to do those kinds of things. And it's like, I I bet we could use their brain in a little bit more value add way. Um, And how do we make it better? So I think there's so many opportunities. Yeah. You know, that's the thing that, that surprises me because I think insurance sees, sees a spectrum, right? You've got the, you know, the small shops with just a couple people where it's really imperative that they try to, you know, maximize those resources. But then, you know, on the, on the other side of it, you know, they just throw bodies at the problem. Right. And that's, I think an interesting dynamic. And I think you guys would lean towards the other end of the spectrum, you know, where you do have just a lot of manpower behind you. Is there something that, you know, you see from, from your, your perspective where you've maybe rethought where again, you know, the body is just throwing bodies at it might not be the best way to do. Is there something really specific that has jumped out to you guys over the years? Yeah, I think um, there's two key areas. The communication, you can make communication look like it's coming from you in an automated way, um, using data and triggers of uh, starting a renewal process, all of that, but also the back end. Um, Back end when we receive downloads, like it blows my mind that we just receive a claim download and it's not a code that tells me what the claim is and the severity of it, that it takes a human to get that download and then review essentially what it is. So we're looking at a lot of that of how to automate more of those activity codes that should be telling us more detail about that activity. Cancellations similar. Cancellation for non-pay is a certain activity. Well, what does it look like? Is it really non-pay? Is it going to go to reinstatement? And it just takes so much manpower. Redoing mortgages on cars and homes and just the manpower that takes where it just, it really needs to be automated and nobody touching it. Do you have any hope that that's something that is going to be figured out sometime in the near future? I do. I think as agencies are going through this consolidation period and there is extreme difference needs between larger agencies and smaller ones, like you said, smaller ones, they do, they, they wrestle it through manpower where larger agencies, you, you have to look at your efficiencies, your return on investment of the commission you receive and what you can pay employees to do. And then you just, there's a volume you can't throw manpower at it anymore. It has to have technology data that we can use to automate more of that stuff. Uh, it probably won't go as fast as I would, I would want it to. Um, working in under other industries outside of the insurance world has tainted me of why isn't this working? <laughs> why does this take so long? <laughs> Yeah, they should have a sign like check your expectations at the door when you come into insurance. I guess maybe here's a good question because I think you've been in the game, in the insurance game for you know a decent number of years now. But before entering the, the industry, what's one, I guess maybe what's one thing that stood out to you the most like when you got here? Like, whoa, hold on a second. Like this, I've just taken five years you know, off of my life in terms of like progressive technology. Yeah, I wouldn't say five. I'd say 20 almost. Um, you know, part of my career, I was a part of... W- building the data flow between um, online uh, lending 
and credit unions and then data processors where uh, when we first started, for example, ATMs, you didn't see the money taken out of your account for about 10 days because there was manpower behind it. And then on the projects of making that faster and faster, and now it's instantaneous because it's data. There's not manpower um, helping that process along. Just even, you know, the download, just receiving a claim download is mind boggling to me that they haven't similar to the medical coding. You can have billers and medical coding just on that code, know exactly what procedure was done just by codes. And and really that's the way we should be receiving more downloaded codes is we know exactly what's happened, whether it's a claim of just glass, it's a claim of Severity, like accident with injuries, cars involved, we should be able to get codes that we can drive communications off of. So when we receive those severe, I want to drive an email that's automated out that we've received this, we'll be in touch versus a glass. Like I'm going to send an email, but it's it's going to be a different, Let you know, let us know how it's going with the carrier and follow up with us if you have any issues. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. And I, have you gotten close to that? Or have you even experienced some sort of feedback from the client when you have sort of uh, pinpointed the message a little closer to the experience? Uh, you know, like you said, like, if it's just a minor, you know, chip in the glass sort of thing, yeah. versus like, a, hey, we've entirely ripped off the front end of our car. Like, what is that experience like? And there, how, how more appreciative are the, are, are the clients of that? Their expectation is there. We're the ones behind their expectation is, which is why they call us. So not having these things are driving up phone calls. You know, they're calling because they're expecting like, I entered a claim and you gave me this wonderful mobile app that I can do that with. I honestly expect an email almost instantaneous that says, got it, we're on it. Hmm. And when they don't get that, they're calling up saying, did you get it? You know, they're it's important to them and we need to acknowledge when they send us stuff, what we're going to do with it, that expectation is already there. So in areas where we have um, created segmented workflows in that way, it's still not, it's not fast enough yet. Um, A lot of our downloads are overnight. So it's, they're looking for instantaneous and we're looking for real time download, but It just, it's not fast enough. So, but where we do acknowledge, we see a increase in our customer experience ratings when we're looking and we're hearing from them. Thank you for getting back to me. I'm not used to that essentially (laughs) with the other insurance agent I was with. So I appreciate it. They're just, they're looking for that proactive communication. Yeah. And I, I think the other thing too is, is it's not something that needs to be overly complex in terms of like what you actually communicate. It just needs to be sort of on point with the, you know, like you said, the, the information needs to match up. Yeah. That, that assessment. Yeah. If you think back when the internet first went live, so I helped at Land's End, which is a, a retailer here in Wisconsin. And manually, we would literally email out order confirmations, they would be a couple days later because it's manual input. And and now that everything's automated, it automatically goes out for that confirmation. That's the expectation people are looking for. Other industries have set that tone. So think of if you ordered something and you never got a confirmation and you never got a shipping, and if it didn't automatically link to UPS tracking, you'd probably be like, this stinks. I don't like this process. That's, that's interesting. Then, so what? What I guess, what key areas are, are do you feel are kind of missing in the insurance transaction process? Right, like those sort of uh, automated responses. Like, what, what in a perfect world, what do you see being like the holy grail? I I see the communication, that proactive communication, not just when they have entered a claim or an update, but our entire renewal process. They're looking for that elevated experience where it feels like we're proactive, they're not calling us. We don't even get notification of, you know, the next renewal cycle of their bill changing until 30 days until their their due date. Well, they already probably mailed out, they're going to receive the bill or get the email if the carrier emails the bill out. And in the consumer's mind, they're just like, 
well, why wouldn't the agency have let me know? Well, we're getting notified almost at the same time, very short notice before they are. So I think we just have a lot of disconnect between agencies and carriers that really could be streamlined to build that overall experience for them that feels cohesive. It's not frustrating. It's the billing's more understood. You know, as soon as they get that bill, they people panic. Like they're, I, I have it due, but I need changes and they want to do the right thing. And we're just not providing the correct timing in that experience that they understand. Well, Billy Joe, you know, I mean, people are afraid that if you sometimes, you know, disturb that business, basically shaking, I've heard this over the years, right? You're going to shake the trees and like, you know, problems are going to fall out. Right. And I think there's a lot of that mindset, but yet the, the customer's expectation is changing now to where that's actually more of a negative. Um, I guess, what have you experienced then in terms of that, you know, sort of relationship, right? Where, you know, if you guys are getting out in front of it in some cases versus where you haven't, um, what have you heard in terms of, you know, the, the, uh, the response that your clients have given you? So we started, uh, we segmented our clients um, and went through and developed co- different customer experiences based on our segments. And for our segments where we've laid out a timeline and we're really going through a proactive uh, risk assessment during a pre-renewal period, um, I think we set it at 150 days out. In the insurance mind frame, it's like, well, that's extra work. That's more work. And then what if something changes between that time and their actual renewal? It doesn't matter if it's more work for us. It's a customer expectation. They like that we're starting early. In their mind, it makes sense. Like, hey, you want to start early with me? So by the time I do get to my payment, like it's a non-event you you see what's coming. If I need to change, you know, I happen to buy a new car at that point when it gets closer to my renewal date. In their mind, okay, that makes sense to them. But waiting till that super short period of time, which we were waiting and then communicating, like it feels they panic. It's it's too close. I, I feel like I get this information and I can't do anything. And the bar is low to set a better customer experience. So I don't, I don't think it would take much to do well. I think you hit on something really interesting there, right? And I think a lot of times uh, we're paralyzed by the specifics, right? I don't want to say anything because I don't know for sure what something is, right? But in reality, you know, consumers are just looking for some sort of reassurance, right? A ballpark, yes. an estimation, just, hey, make me feel better about the situation. I understand that there's some variable here that we need to take into account. Do you think that that's something that we could also maybe adopt a little bit more, uh, you know, generalities around these things and not be so specific sometimes and that uh, that customers are okay with that? I, I think we're going to have to. I, I think we're pe- past the point where the customer really owns this process. We don't. They're going to tell you if they like it or they don't like it by stick it, sticking with you and becoming a a lifelong relationship and building that relationship or in their mind, they're going to move on and they have options, it, especially if you look at the more commoditized personal lines, small business, they do have options and, and you will, uh, for lack of better words, churn and burn people in the door, out the door. If, if you're not providing some of that experience they're looking for, which in turn costs your agency a lot of money. You know, you know, like, like we sort of touched on Tricor is kind of, you know, on the larger side of things in terms of, you know, just agency size. What do you think if, if you're talking to an agency that's a little bit smaller, like what's something that you've sort of learned, you know, looking across a larger sort of agent force that, you know, uh, an agent that's looking to maybe get there could sort of glean from like, what's something that, you know, in, in terms of unifying that message, you know, pulling all of these data points together. Is there something that stands out to you of like saying, hey, listen, if, if you're looking to at least start somewhere in terms of you know, um, figuring some of this stuff out. What's what's something that has really stood out to you? If you get the renewal process correct in the way that a, a customer wants it, using using your data, being proactive, building those communications, it's if you just focused there, you see a lot of wins out of that. You can be pretty terrible at onboarding, not communicate. All of a sudden you, they get their policy in the mail and they're like, I guess, I guess I have insurance, but that renewal process, understanding your data analytics, your data points, 
and your workflow and process in that specific area, if you can get that right, you'll see a lot of success. Yeah. Is there anything in specifically within that renewal process that you found stood out even more so like, you know, just like offering, um, you know, for them to maybe schedule their own renewal appointment or, you know, here's just, here's an advanced notice of like, what's going to happen checklist, or we've got this piece of information here on what to expect of what's coming over the next two months. Is there something that really clicked over everything else in those sort of sequences? We implemented where we really want to lean more into being that advisor. So we have a, built a proprietary risk assessment that we go through. It's a series of questions. It gives a client the feeling that you are truly trying to know them. And it's not just once. You're doing it every year because you're teaching them that your life changes. Things in your life change. Your assets, what you buy, they don't, they don't know any better that, oh, I bought an ATV. What a... I thought I figured it'd just go on my auto insurance or maybe I didn't need it. And they don't know that stuff. So the more that we built an expectation with somebody of we're going to go through an assessment. And although at first they're like, eh, you're just trying to sell me more stuff and get me more things that I don't need. When you taught them that this is something that they need to go through. I'm not trying to sell you because I'm advising you. I'm advising you on your decisions. And it's based on this set of basically kind of rules we put in place. If you own this, you should have this. And and I think that made people were really like at first, because they just weren't expecting, they didn't expect it. They were just really leery of it. But you know, year one, a little leery, like you're trying to sell me something. Year two, they're like, I really appreciate that you bring it up to me of, I did have a baby. I need life insurance. I I appreciate that you're thinking of me. You're advising me. You're, you're more similar to if I had a financial advisor, you're, you're proactively giving me that advice. That's key for us, but we have to be able to do it both in a manual way. When we have some really complex clients that we work with in our uh, private client group or in a, in a digital way where our clients can answer some of those questions on their cell phone and send it back to us. And when it triggers something, we're picking up the phone and calling them or we're saying, everything looks good. You're good to go. So Billy Joe, you just said something that I'm uh, tremendously excited about, right? And the idea of, for lack of a better term, training your clients, right? To sort of accept like what, you know, it's a, it's a delicate dance between what they want and, and what you, 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 what you think they need. Right. And, and it's, yeah, they might not be crazy about it in the first year, but I guess one, uh, is that something that you guys, obviously it sounds like you were intentional in doing, but was there any sort of concern initially again saying, cause generally I've, I found a lot of like pushback, like, Oh, they don't like, that's not like what they want. They're not going to do that such and such, but it's, it's something that's learned over, not just, a week, a month, you know, it's, it's like you said, years of sort of training to say, listen, this is, we will mm-hmm. ultimately get them there and we're, everybody's going to benefit as a result. Yeah. Tons of pushback, tons of pushback internally. Of, they don't want that. They, they don't want to hear from us. Tons and tons of pushback on it. And it, it came down to, all right, we're, we're going to give it a shot. And your first year, because this is new for them, it's, Similar if you go into a retail that the they work on commission, right? They're they're on you right when you come in the door. What can I help you find? And most time I'm just browsing, right? But as soon as you find something you need help with and they're not there, you're like, oh, where are they? Like, why aren't they here? It's it's the same thing where we gotta find that don't be on top of them, but you gotta be there. You gotta say, here's what I'm here for. This is the expectation of if you if you wanna be my client. This is what we're going to follow as a process. This is what you can expect from me. If they're not good with it, they shouldn't be our client. If they don't want that experience, it's okay. You don't have to be our client. But most of them, after they would go through it, they're like, okay, this this feels right. I feel like you're engaged into, into my life and building a relationship that way. And and we've we've used it to actually not have people come in the one calling on a three o'clock Friday. I just need a cert. So I'm going to do something quick and then I'm going to cancel it three months or even three weeks later. We're going to use that as an opportunity of if no, that's not how we work here. 
this is our process. And uh, if you need something like you're explaining, you might need to go down, down the road. All right, Billy Joe, I've got three more questions for you. And uh, first, really simply, what's something that you hope you never forget? Empathy. I, I work, I, underneath me, I have, you know, five generations of, of different types of workers. And some of them have done the same thing for a long time. And it, it takes me a lot of communicating to get them to buy in, right? And I, I need to have that empathy there that, that I'm not getting my vision across to them correctly until I do. And I have a new generation. They're like, oh my God, why? Why is this an email? Why don't we have a system that we can automate and do these different? And they're really, it's challenging. And, and I need empathy for them too, that if I walked in, you know, if I walking in, working in retail for so long and having to step back so many years, it's like, it's super hard, <laughs> super hard to come into the insurance industry and be like, oh, you guys don't have predictive analytics. Like that's, that's a thing that we need to have. And I need to keep that empathy. Everybody's at a different spot in their life. And it's something that it doesn't always come naturally to me. You know, I'll be like, oh, why can't you just understand where we're going and get on board? Um, and I have to think about it. I have to build that empathy for people. Now, on the other side of that, what is uh, one thing that you still have yet to learn? So much to learn. <laughs> you know, I, I'm a person I love learning. I love learning uh, data, marketing, analytics, how it all comes. Even just the, um, the business side of agencies, I, I learn a ton. Um, so I still need to learn more of that business side of commission, of contingencies, of all of how the business runs on that side. And it's, I just need the exposure to it. And I, I'm part of a leadership team that really shares their wealth of knowledge through that. So they're very um, educational in nature when we're looking through a lot of those pieces and uh, building our dashboards. They're um, looking at a lifetime value of a client and what that looks like and really looking at all that spectrum of a, of a business. All right, Billy Joe, last question to you. Uh, and maybe we've spent most of this conversation answering this question, but let's see what else happens. If I were to hand you a magic wand of sorts to reshape, change, alter, really any aspect of insurance, what is that thing? What is it doing and where is it going? Operationally, I would, I would change... Um, download, I would change data, I would change um, just making that more structured, structured data. It's very unstructured in the way that it is today. It just complicates our whole operational workflow. What literally what we have to put in our workflows sometime is because they don't have a UX designer on, on an a AMS system where they're like, oh, why would you put the go back button in this spot? Now I got to train somebody that is in a random position and they got to find it. So I just the things that it's like, it made it so hard that employees can't just learn it. It needs to be intuitive. I shouldn't have to train people how to use click a next button, but it's so not intuitive that it's hard. I would I would definitely work on all that, all the download. I would require her carriers to be on download and their download needs to be correct and work on that for sure. Billy Joe, this has been fantastic. I'm gonna leave it right there. Great, thank you.